the Jim Harbaugh-led Los Angeles Chargers. What do we expect from them? This one, you just feel like, I mean, obviously Jim Harbaugh's a great coach, but more than anything, they needed the culture shock, right? Like, we need a winner in here. And we had too many times where we had all this talent and we're just losing close games and, and we're just not playing fundamentally sound football. And, and these are things that Jim Harbaugh teams do, right? Like, since 2009, whether it be NFL or college, his only losing season was the COVID year in 2020 at Michigan. He went 2-4. and four. Uh, So this is you're talking about a guy who's a proven proven winner and we see the Chargers getting dark horse wild card height because Jim Harbaugh just doesn't lose you know even even his worst teams at Michigan or at the very end with the 49ers were like average teams that were still really really competitive right I mean in the hallmarks are just they play fundamentally sound football they play really physical football especially on defense. And they run the ball. And that last part is where the Chargers, its he, they've made it very clear that they're going to come in here and they're going to run the football more than the Chargers did before, right? You've got Harbaugh in there, Greg Roman back as his offensive coordinator, and you've got a team last year that was last in rushing grade and run blocking grade. So what does he go and do? A draft Joe Alt and pick up every Ravens running back that exists to come with Greg Roman. This is going to look different. Now, I can't say that necessarily they're going to make the postseason because they were in such a hole last year. I mean, they were just, you know, giving up 63 points to the Raiders and, and things like that. Their defense has kind of been a mess for a couple of years. But you can guarantee, at the very least, that same crew is going to go in there under Harbaugh and they're going to play more physical and more fundamentally sound football. Now, with Justin Herbert at quarterback and you still have some stars on defense, right? Mack and Bosa and James and Gilman. And, you know, this is a team that does not have the talent level of a five win team. There's certain sore spots, right? D tackle, maybe linebacker, receiver they're working on, but it, it's, they're just going to play better. It's going to look cleaner than it has under the last few coaches. As far as the number of wins, I think that's hard to predict because the Harbaugh and Justin Herbert factor is one of the biggest X factors. I think in the entire league right now, we've seen how good Justin Herbert can be. We've seen how good Jim Harbaugh can be. Just won a national title. The two of them together is a really, really interesting dynamic. But all around them, they're going to play better football. That's almost unquestioned. Yeah, I think that's the the Harbaugh one is interesting because I think almost everybody expects him to succeed. I don't know that there's that many people out there who believe there's no way the Harbaugh thing works. It's, you know, destined for failure. It's like, it's going to work. The question is how quickly is it going to work, right? And, you know, how quickly can they transform the, what the, the version of the team that's been into this sort of Harbaugh brand of, of hard-nosed, you know, run uh, power type of offense and even sort of adding some teeth to that defense that's been more um, talent than production over the last few years. It's like, can he do that in an offseason? Like, even I, I watched him yesterday uh, giving an interview about Quentin Johnston, right, who has unquestionably been a disappointment so far in the NFL. Harbaugh is talking him up like, like act, acting like the question of him being a disappointment is ridiculous, right, first and foremost, and then talking about him basically being one of the best wide receivers he's ever seen, right? So big, so fast, he's gotten stronger, his, his uh, body control is outstanding, you know, reminding people that he's still bruised from what he did to them in Michigan in the, uh, in the semifinal game a couple of years ago. And it's like, that dude is an amazing hype man, right? Like, Quentin Johnston is being written off by most people outside of that building, and he's out there making him sound like Randy Moss heading into training camp in year two. Well, that has to have an impact. I mean, I started to buy into it a little bit, let alone if you're imagine if you're Quentin Johnston reading that and all you've seen for the last 12 months is people dumping on you. And now here's your coach with this proven track record. And that dude is like going to bat for you in the media. This is why people love playing for Harbaugh. Like he knows how to do that. And whether it's, whether it's an act or whether he's just genuinely like that, that's why people want to play for him. And that works. Like it motivates people. Yeah, and look, I think he is genuinely like that, right? When you think about I can remember going all the way back when the Niners drafted Colin Kaepernick. And, you know, I was in early in the second round, and Jim Harbaugh said, oh, no, this I just drafted the best football player in this draft. And it felt that felt a little exaggerated, but then you see him get five yards from a Super Bowl trophy, and you're like, man, like, was he right? You know, or or even, even at Michigan, look, Michigan isn't loaded. They're, they're not loaded with five-star talent in these big number one recruiting classes and all that. Jim Harbaugh is all about player development, right? And that's what this really, on top of changing the culture, right? That's the first thing he's talked about, talking about getting in the brooms and sweeping the weight room himself and getting the dirty work done is 
He's all about player development. A guy like Quentin Johnston, look, he's got to hype him up. He knows the talent. Quentin Johnston torched him in the playoff game two years ago, right? He, he took a, he took a shallow route, seventy five yards on him, and TCU beat them. He knows physically what he can do. It's just about player development now, and you could argue we haven't seen that enough from the Chargers in recent years with some of their early draft picks, right? Harbaugh is going. He believes in every guy on the team having a role. He believes in having balance, and he believes in developing what he has in there. And and like you said, it might not be this season, right? And who knows if he'll ever win a Super Bowl, right? Maybe that first time around with San Francisco is as close as he'll ever get. But that's what he's going to do. That all that all that positivity, all that stuff, that just comes with Jim Harbaugh, and that's part of the Jim Harbaugh culture, right? And people doubted it at Michigan, and eventually he made it work, right? People, you know, the 49ers, remember before he got there, they were a mess. They were changing offensive coordinators every year. Alex Smith was a bust and everything was going wrong. And he comes in there and boom, the culture just changes. And if there was any team in the league that needed that sort of culture shock, it's them. I mean, everything that they need, culture shock, get more physical, play more fundamentally sound. And honestly, just late game scenarios, man, situational football. Jim Harbaugh's got all of it, right? Again, don't know how soon, but they have Justin Herbert and they have Jim Harbaugh, and, and he's going to find some way to some extent to make that work. I think that's why teams want to play for him is because all of that positivity, all that bluster is genuine coming from him. So let's put a, let's, let's put a number on it. They won, what, five games a year ago. Harbaugh comes in. The division, obviously it's tough because you've got Kansas City in it, but Denver, the Raiders, like neither one of those teams necessarily – uh, are going to be amazing this year. Where? How many games do we think that the Chargers are going to win? I think eight or nine wins is really realistic. I, I think just by playing better situational football, they could get to eight wins. I mean, and you saw games late in the year, probably the last four or five games, especially when they got whacked by the Raiders, they were pretty much just quitting, right? And, and I think they even lost to the Chiefs with with Chad Henney playing quarterback, right? So it's it's you know they were late in the year. It's hard to look at their record and go, okay, they didn't just quit on the last four or five games. But no, I, I think eight or nine is really realistic. I, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't pick them to take a playoff spot, but they're not going to be that far from it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think that's true. Like, I, I think that the, I think there will be an immediate jump because of the Harbaugh thing. Like, I don't think he's going to propel them into contention right away, even with a guy like Justin Herbert giving them that ceiling theoretically. Um, but I do think that that stuff we talked about with Quentin Johnston and like Harbaugh's attitude and, and siege mentality and rah-rah ability, I do think that's going to work. And I definitely think, like, I think they immediately go from five wins to one of those teams in and around that 500 chase. Obviously, you can't hit 500 anymore, but that, you know, the, the eight and a half type, I think eight and a half is their win total. Like they're projected the Vegas line right now uh, with DraftKings or whatever. So... I think they're in, in and around that area of, you know, eight wins, nine wins. I think that's definitely a realistic target for this team because, like, it, you know, you can't forget that they have a guy as good as Justin Herbert. That gives them such a, an ability. If they can create a team around him that's a little bit more like those sort of Seahawks teams with Russell Wilson, like Herbert could absolutely dominate in those close situations. 